In this video, I'm going to talk about how to name a compound, an ionic compound, with a polyatomic ion. It is pretty similar to naming a simple binary compound, and it is very easy if you know your polyatomics. If you do not know your polyatomics, I suggest you really take the time to know them and to learn them, because it is very crucial that you know or you will continue to struggle with this particular topic. So a polyatomic ion is an ion made up of more than one atom and they act as one. The charge on them applies to the entire group. So for example, one of them is carbonate. Carbonate is CO3 and the charge on that entire group is 2 minus. So this acts as one thing. You do not split this up. You keep it together. The crisscross, the charge will crisscross. And then whatever it's bonded to, that subscript will go on this entire group. And I'll show you how to do that. So name to formula. You follow the same rules for naming ionic compounds that we learned. But always keep the polyatomic ion together, including the subscript. By that, I mean like this three. You never crisscross the subscript. So it's important that you know what the subscript is on the polyatomic ions. And use parentheses when you need to. Parentheses are not going to be wrong. There are going to be times when you need to have them, but you can always have them if you want. So let me show you what I mean. Let's start with calcium hydroxide. Calcium is a regular element. If you look it up on the periodic table, it's in group 2A, so it has a two plus charge. Hydroxide, you should know, is a polyatomic ion. It is OH minus. That minus applies to the entire OH group. When we crisscross, this 2 plus now applies to the entire group. So we would have Ca1, we don't write ones. And then you have to put the OH in parentheses so that the 2, it's clear that 2 applies to the whole thing. So you don't want to write this. Because then it looks like that 2 only applies to the H. And it does not. It applies to the entire polyatomic because that polyatomic is one thing. So you need to have parentheses around it. So when you need to have parentheses is when the subscript that you're crisscrossing, so in this case that's the 2, is not a 1. Because if it was a 1, we wouldn't write it, so we wouldn't need parentheses. Lots of my students, especially as they're getting used to this, like to just write parentheses around polyatomic ions all the time. And there's nothing wrong with that. I actually very much encourage it. And there are some books and textbooks out there that will do it all the time anyway. So it's definitely not wrong. So let's do the next one. Ammonium is a polyatomic ion, NH4+. Plus. And nitride, IDE, is just nitrogen, N3 minus. There is a nitrate and a nitrite that are polyatomic ions, but the IDE is just the element. So what I meant by doing parentheses all the time is students will often just put parentheses here to remind themselves that anything here cannot change. The elements and the subscript have to stay where they are. The charge will be crisscrossed. The subscript will be moved over here. But you cannot change anything inside the parentheses. So that's our ammonium nitride formula. And then going the opposite way is pretty easy, especially if you know your polyatomics, because you actually don't have to change any endings. So 
So here, as long as you recognize that this is carbonate, it's pretty easy to write magnesium carbonate. And then here we have ammonium nitride again. That's to show you that if the polyatomic is the first word, you still do need to change that ending. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video and try these name to formula ones. And then come back here for the answers. So one thing, I, a couple things I want to mention. This might look really weird when you have two subscripts. I get it, but that's exactly how it's supposed to be. Another thing, this is an example of a time where you don't need parentheses because the charge that we crisscrossed here was a one. But if you did write it like this, that's also 100% correct. So now do the opposite way. Go ahead and do these three. Pause the video, do these three, and come back for the answers. And that's really all there is to it with naming polyatomics.